Well, tonight's second place finisher. Plenty of fans here, Brett, and a solid second place finish. Yeah, I got to shout out the uh, Turn 2 Terror Boards over there. Uh, they're all a bunch of good guys to hang out with, talk to. I, I really like them. What's going on, everybody? Turn 2 Terribles here. It is January 23rd, 2023. We welcome everybody in. We got a great show tonight. We got Justin Whittle and Devin Borden joining us tonight. Um, really excited to talk to these guys. Um, but yeah, if this is your first time checking us out, um, please like, subscribe, follow, you know, uh, we got a lot of cool stuff on the way, but doing a lot of cool stuff the past couple weeks here. And uh, any, uh, you guys are what makes us keep going. So we appreciate it. Jay Z, Chris, how are you guys doing? Good man, how's it going, buddy? It's good to have you back, Jimmy. Missed you last week, man. Um, hope things are good at home. Um, definitely, like I said, with thoughts and prayers with you and you and your family, and we're happy to have you back, man. Definitely add to the show here and keep us rolling. So. Um, you know, this is going to be awesome tonight. I'm excited. Follow along, listen in. If you're first time watching, um, go back and watch previous episodes. They're all linked here on the Facebook page and on the socials, wherever you might be watching from all the major podcast platforms, go check it out. Tell a friend, um, join in, ask some questions, um, throw us messages, send requests to who you want to have on the show. And we'll try to dig around, use our, use our contacts and, you know, try to get them on here. Uh, we're going to have Justin Whittle on first and hopefully Devin later. Haven't heard from Devin today. So if he comes on, I'm definitely going to give him a hard time about answering his uh, DMs. Um, whether he comes on or not, I'm going to give him a hard time about his DMs. So what's going on, Chris? Love the hat, dude. What's going yeah. on there, bud? Oh, it's a cool hat. Trying something out. Um, it fits nice. Uh, I'm mostly personally happy that Jimmy's back because he does all the hard stuff. So I can just sit here and talk. <laughs> so good to see you, buddy. I appreciate the shirt. I, I appreciate everybody reaching out too. It was a it was a tough couple of weeks, but I do appreciate everybody reaching out and all their support and everything. So much appreciated. But I do love the hat, man. The new logo and everything is so clean. Wait, we have a new logo. I think so. I think that's oh, where it is. Up in the corner. This, like this new logo. Shout out Billy Rally. Yeah. Uh, um, paints by the tuna can. He does a lot of our. As you can see behind me, this is Chris's uh, i racing sprint car. Uh, Billy Rally does all the a lot of the graphic work for us. He's helped me out a lot personally with some things. Um, the logo is pretty cool. It has obviously the the turn two right. It's got a, a little t curve in the the second turn. If it was like an like an Indianapolis shit track, mm -hmm. and the microphone is integrated into the two, and then the little sound wave is the sound wave of the saying the word turn two terribles. How cool is it's that? Genius. It's the Billy, details. It's all in the details. Like, I can't Billy, think of that. An animal. Billy's an animal. Evil genius Logos. man. Badass. All this right. hat is comfortable as hell. It looks. It's Justin Whittle time. It's Justin Whittle time. God. So let's bring him on in. Justin, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing tonight? Good. So everybody following along, we're gonna have. Uh, there might be a little bit of a delay. I don't know if it's a delay on your end or not. Uh, Justin is here. He's live. He's good. Uh, audio may not match video. I don't give a shit. Justin's here. He's going to talk about uh, himself a lot. So if you've watched any of the previous episodes, Justin, um, I think we're kind of going to do the same thing for a lot of our guests. I want to know a little bit about your background, man, like kind of where you got started. Is your family in racing? Uh, what age did you get started? Um, how did you get to where you're at today? So, so my dad used to race before he had kids. and Well, he 
he had my older brother and my older sister, and he sold the cars, some, some like Cam uh, Camaros and stuff like that. And he's had them. Mister came along. He sold them, and he based when I was younger until I got to seven. And one day after school, he took me to a quarter local to us, and he had asked me if I wanted to do it. And I thought it was the, I said, yeah. So that winter, we bought a car, put it together. Well, he was doing it at the time. And, and we got a car, car did uh, rookie school. They had restricted plates in the car and all, all that stuff. And we just have been racing since I've been seven. So um, moved up, and you got started when you were seven, moved up, and what kind of the classes you went through to get to a 410? Kind of where did that timeline look like? So from seven to 11 and a half quarter midgets from all over uh, the eastern side of the United States. Uh, then I started, then we got a uh, Ford Focus midget on asphalt, and I raced at <laughs> about three and a half, half years to that time frame and we sold sold that at, and got a 600 micro sprint 15 and did that for two years to eight, 17 18 we got a 360 i think around that time time frame racing sprint cars since then Okay, so, uh, well, you're, you're you're not you haven't been on Earth very long, so uh, you know it's not very long. But um, you know, if you if anybody's been in Central PA and they they've seen you race and seen you uh, the the highs and lows, right? A little bit of everything. So you've kind of run the gamut as a young driver, and I think that's pretty common. Like you know, the guys that we talk to that listen, they we don't have to tell them to slow down, right? They're gonna have some you're, you're gonna win some races by doing that that way, and you're gonna you're gonna lose some races and you're going to crash in spectacular fashion sometimes. Right. So I think you've kind of run the entire gamut of that. So um, tell us a little bit about your journey in a 410 and, and kind of like, you know, what you've kind of, where, what you learned, where you're at today, where do you think you are as a driver in your career at this point? Uh, I've definitely been less of lows. I've probably been low, low, so lows, probably but it's part of learning. You got to do it. You got everybody has to go through it. I say I'm all right. I still think I need to learn a little more, be more aggressive on the track, animation about the tracks, the car, a little better than I should be doing. Yeah. Um. So I, you know, I think as I look at kind of watching you race here the last few years, I'm I probably spend most of my time at Lincoln. Uh, but you've kind of kind of been the Port Royal Williams Grove guy, which is okay in last year too. But I think this past season, I think I probably saw the most improvement from from you on a, like a consistent basis. Everyone has those nights. Everybody has those nights where things just don't go well. And that, listen, that's part of racing. But I think this season, especially at Port Royal, you made some big strides. Like, what do you attribute some of that to? I can attribute that to the, myself working together and then everybody that works on the car and helps me with the, like the sponsors my parents my grandparents they've been and we've been figuring some shit out need to be a little better i figured some things out towards the end something's good something's not good trying to get better with it um so when you're trying to figure all that out, that can be a tall task. And you're trying to figure it out as a young guy, you know, a mm -hmm. young team per se. So what kind of help do you have, like with your notebook, your car, your the history, uh, like crew chief wise? I mean, have you been kind of hooked up with a, a veteran crew chief or is it kind of like you and the family and, and some buddies just kind of figuring it all out as you go? Definitely. I, definitely have the crew chief. He, he's been around the scene for I, he he sometimes wants to kill me 
me for things I've done. One is dope. <laughs> but I, I, I try when he deals up, deals with my, my my crap, and tries to make though I try to drive the car as hard as I can. Make it not seem like it. Could probably do a little better, but we're working. Okay, and who is your crew chief? Wibley. What, what was it? Brandon Wibley. Okay, got it. So I don't know his history a lot. Maybe he needs to come on the show so I can learn a little bit about Brandon. Uh, I know the Wibley name uh, if he's related to the Wibleys of Central PA Racing in that scene. Uh, I assume so. Um, I know that name for sure, but I don't know Brandon that well. So we might uh, we'll put that on the list there, boys. We'll write that name down. Uh, yeah. Crew chief time. We haven't had too many of those one yet. Well, Dakota. Does Dakota count as a no, crew chief? No, Dakota does not count. We don't even mention his name. You've already said it once. No more times. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Uh, we won't bring that up. Justin knows who Dakota is. I, I know. So I think, right? Dakota Coon helps out Jordan. Give her. That, that's twice. Uh, Third time's Beetlejuice. Yeah. Uh, oh. Okay, the name not spoken. Um, Jordan Gilbert's a good guy, though. <laughs> we do like Jordan a little. Um, so, okay, so, I, you know, as I as I kind of look back and, and watch you come up through, I think for me, even before I got into photography this year, something that always jumped out to me is I spotted your car, and your car has always been one of the sharpest cars in Central PA from from the jump, right? And like. Mm-hmm. We talked to Aaron Bollinger last week, and I think he's always had a good-looking race car. It's not flashy per se, but it's 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 consistent, it's sharp, it's clean. And you think, man, that guy, you know, they got they got the funding, they got the people. And I talked to Aaron, and he's got like you know two and a half people, and uh, <laughs> they just kind of do it on a whim each week and where they want to go, and that's that's okay. But it gives that perception of like, hey, we got our shit together. And not that you don't, but like I I've always said I could as a fan, I spotted your car more than some other cars I've seen faster if that makes sense so oh uh oh he gone hey chris how's it going man it's good to see you my friend <laughs> good to see you, uh, i'll tell you what no, man, there he is there he's he is back. he's back i got a call oh he bad. might have the sleep no he might have the sleep timer like uh Mike Walter no had no he got a too. call he got a call no <laughs> my old lady called no, you want to talk to her? Do you no, want to talk to her no, on the show? I'll, I'll call her back. I'll call her back. <laughs> oh, we can do that. We're, listen, we're, we're my mom will walk by here any minute. I don't know. Um, so I'm gonna like get said, my your car stands up. out, and <laughs> she didn't know you were doing this tonight. No, nope, I just hit the fu button. Oh boy! Oh, oh no. no! Oh boy! Oh. I hope we don't. We have couches we if you need some. one. <laughs> yeah. Mike Walter okay. had to use one last week when he was. <laughs> yeah, the baby, baby cried for you know the whole show. He felt <laughs> I felt so bad. Um, <laughs> so, like I said, I you know I've always spotted your car, so I've always kind of I've always kind of watched your journey a little bit, and it's like those nights where that things are going well, man. You seem to be that aggressive, like get up after it, go after it, and then there's nights where it's just sort of like, hey. Where you get what what's happening tonight, right? So I think everyone has those moments, but I think that you've been this very like contrast of like great, like they're like you don't seem to have a lot of like like six place quiet finishes. You're either out to launch your record or you're winning the damn thing. And and like is is something like consistency something that you think about and talk about? I could be wrong on that by the way. I, I think we're I losing right Jay Z right now. We're losing Jay Z now. Too. We're losing Jay Z right uh-huh. now. But basically, <laughs> um, what he's saying is. You're winning, like you did at Port Royal, and mm-hmm. last year at Winters Grove for your first win. That was that was cool to be there for that. That's also side note: the only mini wing panel of a race winner that I do not have. So maybe you should work on that. No, <laughs> I, think um, I, have one left. I think I have one left of that car. Of that red and black? One? I didn't even see them because that's the only one I'm missing. So we need to talk then. But um, okay. I might have to so use we're talk- mine then. <laughs> oh, we can probably talk to Billy. He'll make one. Um, <laughs> um, please, he's saying as far as you're always making noise, right, one way or the other, and you're not just kind of right. lurking there. So, like, kind of what goes into that? Um, I, I think that's where Jay Z was going. Just consistency. Are you looking to get more yeah. consistent with that, or are you just kind of winning or wearing it, as they say? I like to be more consistent, but sometimes I just get bored and uh, I tend to get out of. <laughs> my focus and try to do something that's spectacular and then I'll hurt myself and bend some crap up or screwing myself over. 
and make myself look like a dumbass. But I tried to be more consistent. Towards the end of the year, we started to get more consistent. Then I had the one fuck up. <laughs> but eh. was that at Williams Grove by chance? Yeah, I was just asking I was say, for is that Williams Grove. All right, yeah. we'll come back to that. Continue yeah. on. <laughs> but yeah, we. It was definitely. I'm trying to work on being consistent more. That's what I want to be at the track, more consistent, do better, and try to be all around a top 10 to 5 driver. I want to win as a plus, but I want to be consistent. And I, I personally think you've succeeded in that, if you, yep. especially towards the end of the year. We, we were talking like Port Royal. You were just off the podium at the score 50 and the World of Outlaws show. Like you're, you're there, right? And that's just, step one to winning is being there um, more so than I remember in other years consistently in that five to 10 range. And I, so I think, I think in my opinion, you achieved that goal a little bit. Honestly, my, my goal for those shows was just to make the feature. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting to be doing that. Makes it even sweeter though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you finished fifth in Port Royal points. So that, I think that goes to show you know, you found that consistency, especially at Port Royal. Um, I mean, you have a win at Williams Grove, but maybe not as consistent at Williams Grove. Um, what is it about Port Royal that maybe has been suiting you better? Or is it just bad luck at Williams Grove? Or I love all the tracks, but they hate me, so it's a love hate. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know what I did to it, but I love that I, answer. I, I love, I love all the tracks. Right. <laughs> I just. I don't know. I just, for some reason, I, I really love Port Royal. It may not seem like it on some days, but I, I, I love the track. I think the facility is great. Somewhat just the old track, like ha not being as dry slick, but it still makes for great racing. Do you tend to consider yourself uh, like a big track fan versus short tracks, or is it just sort of what you've developed into, like, hey, I do well here, so I'm going to stick with it? I like the big tracks. I wish I did more small tracks. Like two two years ago, I went to East Bay and I thought that place was fun, but I sucked. But I thought it was a blast. Um. So at Williams Grove, you know, we talk a lot to a lot of guys, and over the years, you've heard these stories about, about just how technical and difficult it, it is. Even though it looks like you just turn really hard twice and you drive down these long ass straightaways, have, have you found that to be true as far as just the difficulty racing? in a 410 in traffic and or just navigating it on your own. Yeah, Williams Grove is very difficult to, on the track. You, like the Outlaw show where I had to screw up. Uh, we were quick in hot laps and then time trials came around and I just sucked and it put me behind the eight ball after that. And then the heat race, I was just in, in the back and sucking. I was in my head and made a dumb move and ended up in the wall and just um, uh, it's, <laughs> it just the, the track's very difficult, it, especially when it's locked down the first heat race fat, and it's fast and great, like a heavy track. It's, it's difficult, but it, it's fun. I, I think it's fun. What would you say is your favorite track? No. <laughs> Damn you! <laughs> uh, I like I like Lincoln more than. Uh, oh wow! And I don't just like that. <laughs> no, just, uh, you mine. were talking about that screw up at, at at Williams Grove a little bit, and you you walked away with an injury there. You had a bruised lung. Am I correct? Yes. <clears throat> How are you feeling now? And do you have any like lingering effects or anything, or everything good? No, just I'm fine. Just good. another day. <laughs> The other day, getting race car drivers, man. Like, that's, that's, oh, yeah. you know, just a little <laughs> bruise in my lung. It's another day. It's fine. Is my Bad microphone ass. better he, right now? Your microphone's yes. fine, but now Justin's no. got a call from the other again. We're good. Yeah. We're good. Oh, I don't right. sound that. Right. It's starting I'll, to come together, guys. Anyway, he right. can't. I'll, he I'll no fix my right mic now. for next week on the other one. <laughs> Justin hey, has no sound. What, while you can't respond and uh, do anything, I want to talk about the fight. Oh, he's coming back. He's coming back. He's here. I'm back. Can you hear me? He's back. He's back. Mm -hmm. He's back. Right. That was the old right. lady again. <laughs> oh, no. You better, you, you, you better send an email or yeah, you might message want to send or something, buddy. Time to send a text, bud. <laughs> I may have to. 
All right. You could send her a link and she could watch it. So she could prove that you're not doing it. Yeah, that's the true. We'll corroborate for you. Yeah, I think there's live footage of where you're at right now. Can we confirm can you are in a very safe space. Can confirm. <laughs> All right. So uh, uh, we're going to bring up the. We cannot confirm now. Hold on. Oh, she's, she's calling again. <laughs> he might be texting. Let him, he may let be him. talking. This could be fine. No, she... I'm good. There we go. There you go. Okay. All right. We're good. All right nice so we're going to bring up the small elephant in the room, and I'm just going to get into it. Um, and <laughs> shame on you. This is, <laughs> this is your own fault um, because I forgot about this. I watched this on Flow that night, and I forget where I was or what I was doing. And I'm like, are they fighting? Is that, jo- is that Tyler Ross? And wait, why are they fighting? Okay. I want to know. Give, <laughs> listen, I. I don't know if y'all are friends. You're not friends. You still hate each other. I don't care about any of that. <laughs> what the hell happened to get to this point that night? So early on in the race, um, I went for a hole and on the bottom going in the one uh, um, under Tyler. And when I hit the bottom, I got a little too tight and I slid up the track and fed him or I didn't mean, mean to feed him a right rear, but he hit my right rear. <laughs> and... <laughs> The races went on. He's still behind me, and a caution came out. And under caution, he's beating on my back bumper, beating on the back bumper, beating on the back bumper. And on the a restart, I get away from him. I'm ra- racing, and then all of a sudden, my nose wing claps. Yellow comes out. I pull into the pits. Uh, I think my nose wing collapsed. Something like that happened, and uh, I was starting in the rear. And I made my way up towards the end of the race. And he was running 11th at the time, I believe. And I just got around him going into one again. And as I got around him, he tried turning down on me and taking me out. But he ripped a front wing panel off of his car. So the caution came out. And on the restart, um, going into one, I slid up. He got by me, but I crossed him over going down the back stretch. And entering three, he just drove straight through me. Oh, so okay. I was I was a little mad, and when I got out, I jumped on his hood multiple times, and then allegedly went from there. It, it could have been Chad Trout, though, from what we heard. Yeah, <laughs> <We're tired laughs> at, but <laughs> I, mean, yeah, was... I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> there, was, there was so there was so much about that whole incident that was just like, what is going on between Bruce not knowing who was even at the racetrack or in on Earth at that point, and <laughs> you actually fighting someone on the track, and you and Tyler rolling like. It was chaos and it was awesome. So I, re- I, I don't I don't love it. it. Don't it don't want to wreck race cars. The right. best well, listen, part was emotions, being at Wage right? Grove that night and not even knowing it was happening. Like we knew the incident happened. We did not know because I we're I stand right turn three, no idea this is going down until they're all in Discord. We're like, what the hell? I'm like, dude, I'm right here, I don't see shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> um <laughs> so definitely not your your finest moment. You regret that even happening, right? So are you and Tyler good now? You've talked it out. Yeah. After that, the rest of the year, we're, we were kind of like magnets next week. Like we would always, of course, kind of mm-hmm. collide. But I, we, towards the end of the year, we kind of just stayed away from each other. I mean, or I guess we're all right. I mean, I don't really talk to the guy. I'm yeah. assuming. You guys didn't have a friendship before that. You were just racers. Just, yeah. Just so I'd like it. Casual, hey, what's up? And that's it. Yeah. It. Yeah. And and I don't think either of you are unfriendly people. I mean, they all have connections in the pits, but sometimes just, it's just one of those things. So, um, we talked a little bit about this sort of pre-show there. We were talking about paint schemes and that picture that we had up preview, uh, as we were kind of coming in there, that, that picture I got at Port Royal mm-hmm. and, like I probably could have taken, you know, three, 4,000 photos of your car this year. But at some point I actually stopped taking photos of your car. Cause I'm like, I can only do so many pictures of your car everywhere I go. And I'm like, it's like one of the better, to me, it was the top five scheme of the whole year for me. And I, are you changing it? Are you keeping the same? Can you spoil anything? You don't have to tell me any details. And if you say no at this point, I'm okay with no. And if you all surprise, if you surprise us at some point, I'm okay with that. For right now, for the beginning of the season, we're going to keep it the same as last year's. But um, in the middle-ish of the season, we may change it to something else, but I'm not 100% sure yet. We're, we, I got to work with Ryan on that. But we may change it to something else. Okay. Um, 
last thing for me, and I have Jimmy and Chris here waiting there. I know they have questions. So uh, one thing I like to always, I, I, I think I'm going to ask this every week, and I, I like this question a lot. And last week, I think the other you week it stumped somebody. I don't think so. Right, okay. No, I'm not going to do it this time. I, I don't. I can't read your mind, but I'm not going to do it. Um, aside from the Williams Grove incident, that question didn't prompt this question. But one driver that you love racing with, and a driver that you just hate racing with. Not that you hate the person, but you just just difficult like to mat. race around, hard to pass, uh, difficult to sustain in front of, whatever the case may be. One of each. And for the record, my two are in the call with us. One question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's up? <laughs> yeah. Well, GZ, I can't catch you. And Jimmy, I can't pass you. So, Justin, you're up. <laughs> I like Danny Dietrich. You this like racing with Danny? Racing. Okay. Racing with Danny Dietrich. <laughs> He's a good guy. And the kid that's coming on. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, okay. Let's go. I love it. Uh, I love this question. I got to be honest. I might have yeah. found something here. This I just definitely... stumbled upon this. Um, and listen, and when we talk about those things, there's going to be people for sure that we have on here that are going to be like, well, I don't like him. I don't like racing around him. I, I don't need to be, be personal, right? It's just on the racetrack. When you get around somebody, it's that one person. You're like, son of a bitch. I either can't get by them or they're, you know, Getting super aggressive and, and taking away my stuff. So. Um, and that's okay. Well, Aaron Bollinger last week, right, was Troy Wagaman and Freddie. Love racing Troy. Yeah, Troy. I, Troy. I, I, I agree with Aaron on that. And Freddie was the other one. And uh, Mike, who'd he say? He. Uh, I don't know if we asked him that. No, one. We, we I might have broke that to. out for the first time with Aaron. Well, honestly, well, I think Mike answered the question pre-show, so we'll we'll talk about that later. No, uh, oh yeah, he did. Uh, yeah, we'll get so, into that, that. Listen, that's Port Royal side. guys, man, we'll y'all Justin. y'all got <laughs> the Port Royal boys got some beef with each other, my guy. Like, <laughs> I never never uh, never <laughs> thought of it. So <laughs> Justin uh, knows the answer. I think based on what Michael was saying to us, <laughs> their friends, he knows uh, the answer. Uh, know the so answer. we'll leave it. We'll leave it <laughs> where it's at. <laughs> um, uh, probably. So. Um, yeah, Chris, Jimmy, what do you got? Well, Jimmy, I think a good question from uh, Sean there in the chat. Uh, what do you do for a living? Says uh, comes from Sean Donnelly on Facebook. Thanks for thanks for asking, Sean. I I used to be a diesel mechanic. I worked in uh, Westchester for A Dewey Pile for a couple of years. Then I worked for Mid Atlantic Transportation as a diesel tech, and then now I'm working for the old man. And he wants to probably kill me and get rid of me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I work that's for, awesome. Now I work for my dad at Auto Body Shop. Cool. Thank you, Sean, for that and, question. And, yeah, shout out to Sean too. Uh, almost every week, yeah, they're here watching the show. So, thank you for that. Uh, my question is: is you know, we talked a little bit about paint scheme. What does your schedule look like? Are you going to do basically kind of the same thing? Or, um, you know, we know high limits a thing that's out there that people are really talking about and stuff like that. I, 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 are you looking at doing any more traveling? What, what, what's 2023 looking like for you? In the off season, we were thinking about maybe going to Knoxville a couple times and maybe the Eldora Million, but we're, that's up in the air. But we're going to be doing the same thing, maybe trying to go – well, since Logan's not racing up, well, he's going to be racing at Port Royal, which is one of the schedule. We're going to go tr- try to get that title from Logan. Awesome. That's cool to hear. Oh, yeah. Um, you, uh, oh, man, it's gone. I had something that was going to be super good. I, guess I promise. <laughs> are you are you looking at what, uh, running Williams Grove two weekly? Yes. Okay, cool. Did you run all of Speed Week last year? No. Are you, you, have pla- you, have, you have plans to do that? Is that something you ever want to entertain? That's a we long did. week. We did it one year, and it was just my dad and I, and our crew guys had work, and or my crew guys had work. And But I think this year they're going to take off work so we can do the full thing, but I'm not sure. Nice. Uh, I remember my question now. So uh, you're from the – are you in Jersey or are you in PA? Jersey. You're in Jersey. So – um, did you do three sixties? You said you ran three sixty a little bit four four ten, right? Yes. So did you kind of stay the? Did you go URC route? Were you in URC or you yeah, just I was in URC? And how was that experience for you? It was great. The traveling was fun. Some of the tracks were 
<laughs> questionable, but the, the, I liked the, tra the traveling was fun. It was different, nice to be at different tracks, but being at the same tracks, getting good notes, being consistent at tracks, it's, I like that better, but the traveling, I like the traveling, it was fun. Yeah. And if, um, is that a goal for you eventually is to, as you progress, you mature, you're winning races, build a team to, to go out on the road and do, do a lot more of that. I don't know. It's not, what, if, uh, what if, what if dad fires you? <laughs> <laughs> do you have the looks free like time? I'm, looks, I'm, looks like I'm kicking rocks and dad fires me. Um, this is either Chris or uh, Chris. I'm not going to steal your question here at the yeah, end. You're about trying. That. You're, I'm, you're, I was going. To. I'm not. I'm not doing it. Are you? Uh, are you an iRacer? That wasn't my question. Yes, but I don't. I don't play it as much. That's yeah, I think I thought I remember you on when Port first came out. Were well, you, you should on definitely one? come play. I suck. <laughs> suck. So do I. It's fine. So I, I'm do we. The, I'm the filler. <laughs> we are too. Um, it depend. Well, depending on the league, I guess. Right. So. All of us can be at times. Um, I'm really good at practices. Practices. You're an idiot. Um, <laughs> are you a fan of any other types of, of racing outside of what we do? And a NASCAR guy, a drag racing guy? Used to like NAPCAR, but I like I like drag <laughs> thing a little bit. My my one good friend does it. I like Formula One. So, uh, um, that's like all types of racing. NAPCAR. Uh, Fred. As you've gotten into four tens, uh, sounds like your path. Did you race? Were there guys that you race with weekly that you race in six hundreds with weekly? I used to race with Aaron Bollinger, um, Dylan Norris. And I, I think that's it. That's in four tens. Most of the kids I raced with they either went to the modified route that are, I raced with from New Jersey went the modified route or in six hundreds or the wingless. Uh, 360 deal so when you're when you're you know a 600 you're great right, doing your micro thing and you're a young guy you ever see somebody and be like man they're not gonna do they're not gonna do well here and then you see guys also that you're like wow that they're special like other than yourself right do you, you ever have those moments where you kind of compare not compare yourself but like holy crap i'm gonna have to race against this guy forever yeah i thought aaron when we, when he was racing 600 he was very well i thought he'd do fairly good fairly good or good in a sprint car and I, once i saw him get a sprint car i was actually kind of happy to race against him yeah it's, it's almost like hey we did we experienced this together now and you know go race and compete there and grow together so um my wife's looking at me i think she just tried to dial me don't maybe it's my turn she's giving me a look i don't know what's happening right now <laughs> no, um, that live television. Oh. <laughs> as you as you bought a 410 what what did you learn the most when you went up there like you were in a 360 you had some urc experience but when you jumped into 410 and you come race against these guys which you kind of know our area i mean it's not like you new jersey's far away what was like your big uh like wow moment did you have one of those when you got out there yeah the 410s are way different from a 360 just the power like it might not seem like much but the power just makes everything then how the car reacts and the, the air from another car it's it's absurd like brock zierfoss i was i talked to him um he said he like the, going from 410 to 360 is like slow-mo like the car is just effortlessly like you can hit your points and stuff that's why like most of the guys like geo selzy when he won the Knoxville Nationals for the 360s, or not Knoxville Nationals, but the 360 Nationals. Mm -hmm. He goes out there before and does the 360 Nationals, and then it warms him up for the Knoxville Nationals. That's why most a lot of guys do that. They go back. So, uh, do you get into 360 anymore? I wish I did. I sold all. I sold all. I wish. I regret selling one motor, the one motor I had, but we sold our motors to Blake Hahn. Oh, well, that's a good one to sell him too. I'd imagine uh, he he puts them to good use. Um, yeah, I'm fairly good. I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that you know when URC comes to Port Royal, I think you'd be that one of those guys, the double duty kind of deal, and and I think you know you do well with that. As good as you are in the 410 here lately, you know there that and honestly, whenever URC comes to Port Royal, you're seeing more and more guys, you know, Macri and uh, you know some of those guys go down and get into that 360 and obviously do well. Ryan Taylor does well in a 360. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think it's a, it's a nice little springboard and I think at Port Royal, it's a good, it, 
I mean, I think you'd kick ass there, to be honest with you, as good as you are in a 410. Yeah, the, I wish I had a 360 to do, like, the Port Royal or the Grove races. Macri does it. Um, I wish I could do it, but don't have a motor. But I, I think it would be fun. Uh, you going to Florida? I'm going to Disney first for a little bit with the old lady, <laughs> and then I'm going to go watch in Volusia. I'm not going to race, sadly. No. It's still cool to be down there. What do you yeah. gotta do to get what do you gotta do to get that done? I mean another less one less day at Disney? No. <laughs> She'll kill you. I, maybe after she like you hang up on her twice and you text her and now she's gonna watch this, she's gonna kill you. <laughs> You're welcome, Dustin. <laughs> my, my, crew guys have, so... my, my crew guys have a bet that she's gonna kick my ass sooner or later. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Well, she... you're amongst the um, you're amongst friends here uh, at that point because Jimmy's going to get uh, stabbed in his sleep probably for sure one day. Uh, and, and Chris, I I don't know. He just might be just you know she, just disappear and, and Chris will be like, I, I haven't seen her. I don't know. Yeah, there's a fair chance that she kills me too. Um, <laughs> it's fine. I probably deserve it. So Justin, my question to so go back to your first 410 win was Williams Grove in 21, correct? Yes. <laughs> What do you remember yeah. that night? Like, that, that win, right? Like, what? <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> what I remember about that night is... Uh, Did you start pole? Say no. Yeah, I started... I started, started on... pole. Son of a bitch. It's Williams I knew Grove. He did. You know he did. I know he did. I was there. It was a lockdown heavy pack. <laughs> I think it, ra- it was raining. Of course it was. Ra- day before, <laughs> it's a lockdown heavy track. And then it was just... I started on the pole. I know. I started second in my heat race and won it and then started on the pole and led every lap. But the last couple laps, uh, W link broke. So Kyle, um, Moody was catching me. <laughs> yeah, that, that no. And then I did donuts and then parked it on the front stretch. And then Kyle Moody tried to get me disqualified because I didn't go to the scales. <laughs> <laughs> did not know that part. That, yeah. That's spicy. Uh, no, from, Obviously, sitting in there on just past the bridge, I saw you win, and you know it was your first win. And everything that did not know about the other stuff. That's that's fun. Um, <laughs> so, which one was bigger, that win or the Port Royal win this Port year? Royal. Which one? No, okay. Yeah. Which he race did you win at Port? Was it what night was it? <laughs> the it was the last race at Port Royal with the modifieds. It was the Labor Day makeup. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Mm-hmm. They counted it as Labor Day. I'll, let, I'll see. You. I don't know. Hey, I really don't. I don't count it as Labor Day. I, I count Labor Day as in the day. That's right. Track. When everybody's official there. stat sheet says Labor Day. Yeah. Is this official. like a Brock Zierfoss National Open? Is that okay? That's still a National Open, buddy. I don't was that the one that was in National Open? Or no, was that or was that Cody Dara? Who was the one that won it? Like when it was delayed, and nobody was in town. Do you remember that? It was uh it was not Cody Dare. It was no. I don't remember that, but I do know what you're talking about. There was a Natty Open one year that like they ran it. Uh, so it's anyway. kind of score of fifty they ran it a few years ago when the outlaws sanctioned it. Yeah. 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 I remember so, that. And then Logan Wag no. Who was running the forty nine car at the time? I think it was uh Schaefer? Tim Schaefer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Tim Schaefer lost a right rear wheel, and Logan ran it over. Oh, yeah, that was a little nasty. Wall. So <laughs> that was a nasty wreck. Oh no, <laughs> Justin, you're in real trouble now. You're yeah, sold out. Front of the show here, sold out. Theater, you're in trouble now because she's watching. <laughs> Thanks. Well, for at least again, we can <laughs> confirm that that he is very much in a safe space. Um, All right, so I'm going to throw you a softball. What do you like to do outside of racing? What are your hobbies? What do you like to do? I like to drive my car. That's about it. <laughs> what do you what, what do you have? A GT three fifty. Really? A year? Uh year? 20, 2018. 18, yeah. what color? Gray? The avalanche gray or the the, the lithium oh, gray, the flat gray? The metallic I think it's called metallic gray. Yeah. Okay. All right. I got you. Stripes, no stripes. No stripes. No stripes. Okay, I'm good with that. I see I'm, you. I see you. <laughs> All right. I, I listen. I work at a Ford store, and I, I I bought a Mustang this past year, so I'm I'm a big Ford guy. So uh, I can I can I can appreciate that. And I gave you a softball to say, you know, spend time with my girlfriend Coral, but you didn't <laughs> take it. I just put it on a tee for you to 
and okay, nothing. Well, here, now so. you just swinging a, swinging a, swinging a, <laughs> you, you straight knocked him out. Now, sorry, so. Coral. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. For this. Are are you doing the icebreaker? Yes. Oh, oh all right. Hey, yeah, we're gonna lose you one car there. Why they made it two days? I don't know. I think it's stupid in my opinion. Uh, I agree. Right. So let's go off of that too. The dirt classic being two days now as well. What are your thoughts on that? Because that kind of a little bit affects Port Royal. Maybe. I don't think we may do the dirt classic. I'm not hundred percent sure. I'm not sure. You know, I think we we haven't really got into this. We we've been having guests and haven't talked, but I think it's a good time to think about this. Like. If you look at Williams Grove and you look at Port Royal, they have a lot of multi-day shows and throughout their season, right? And the outlaw, they're the Williams Groves. Most when the outlaws are in town, where they have Summer Nationals, Morgan Cup, National Open. What double two-day show does Lincoln Speedway ever run? Right. They don't. I didn't even think about that. None. So why do you think this is a thing this year? I bet. Hey, this is our weekend, right? This is our thing. Whether it's the icebreaker, it's. I mean. Yeah, I think that all of us as drivers and racers, you're like, man, I, uh, okay, against your will, right? If you're going to go, Thank nobody you. loves it unless it's 65 and you got something to race on. But really, the icebreaker ra- racetrack's been better the last couple of years than a few years previous where it was just awful. But anyway, I digress. But Lincoln doesn't have that event. They have the Wild Wall Show on a Wednesday. Their Dirt Classic was a one day deal. That's kind of their thing. Their Speed Week shows are usually pretty decent. But they've never done the two-day thing. So for me, I looked at that and went, well, okay, I, I can see why. The Icebreakers, it's their thing, right? They're the Northeast opener in a sense of like, <laughs> hey, we're the first one around. So it makes sense to me. But I think as we move forward with schedules, I think you're going to see more and more of that from like a Lincoln to kind of do like, you know, the Labor Day weekend, the Williams Grove double days. They kind of have the two-day deal there and hopefully get, you know, get the car count. So it makes sense to me. But the Dirt Classic one is kind of their thing, but also diving into when they change the time and where time of the year with the Port Royal thing is definitely going to be kind of an interesting dynamic for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, with Port Royal and Lincoln kind of competing this past couple seasons for cars, both tracks have done well. Like no, neither track is really hurt for cars, but when so, you have a big show like that and there's money involved, I think it's going to create, it, it could, I don't know. I, I will guess we'll see how it plays out. Right. Cause so the, is the dirt classic going to two days that would overlap with fair opener. Butch- Fair opener, which was a basically a late model show last year. So there's a way they both can win here. It's just a matter of do they want to go that route. Um, I don't know. And well, do the teams. Will... Yeah, I was right. gonna say if I if you said you're trying to chase that title, right, you have to kind of you have to go to you're gonna have to go to Port Royal, am I right? Yep. Yeah. I'm gonna try to take it from Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um. Go ahead, Chris. I was gonna say, speaking of like Port Royal, like obviously Logan Wagner's been the guy there the last five. Is it five in a row now? Was it four? Yes. Five. Right. So, what do you have to do, in your opinion, to beat him? <laughs> I guess don't other than showing up every week, showing up every week is key one. Yeah, don't do dumb shit. Put myself in bad positions. Um, just stay on my game and talk to my crew chief more. Watch the track and try to give him better information about how the car is, how the track, what, how it was on certain parts of the track and try to keep, keep up on my toes and keep him on, on his toes. Right. So, I mean, I think the back quarter of the season, you obviously won there and we're running well. So, um, how much is that experience going to help you, you know, go into the next, next season? I think it's going to maybe close that gap a little bit and like, it, you keep building year to year. That's clearly a, a good thing. So, yeah, well, I'll see. We'll see. Coming this season, we're starting out with new cars. The, <laughs> unfortunately, the ones I've shit talk well. from the Walters now, the Walter clan. <laughs> you got Just remember we're pits. I'm, we pit beside you. You ain't taking anything. <laughs> <laughs> guessing Rob's Rob's got something to do with this. Um, <laughs> Oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. You and Mike Walter. Oh man, he's a good buddy of mine. <laughs> I know, he's a good guy. I don't know who to root for anymore. Oh, <laughs> that's your choice, not mine. I guess we have um, to get both shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a time trial guy, or would you rather just kind of pill draw and handicap? I like both. Um, unless 
unless it's a uh, group time trials and i absolutely hate it really so pork so, royal <laughs> interesting <laughs> um the webs here man Just why don't what, what's us. the reasoning against group time trials just curious because port royal started to get better with it putting less cars out on the track but they'll put a bunch of cars out on the track and you take time and then you get you're up to speed and then you get stuck behind a slower car and then you, you, your lap screwed right so you right. have to pass them sense. or lay back and then you, you don't get a lap or your laps are all just slow and then you start in the back of your heat race awesome so that's it I, I, that makes sense i never i never thought that so so just before we really get you out of here we obviously your partner so what race if you had to pick do you really want to win over all of them the waker the waker oh back to back weeks like yeah obviously your buddy mike how do you Walter feel about the same thing <laughs> something about the bullhead man the <laughs> bullhead two weeks in a row <laughs> that's awesome I appreciate that. The Wiker, yeah. I mean, it's it's growing it's, and it's yeah. cool. It's a cool trophy and Wiker over to fifty. See, the... is is it the trophy that makes the difference? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. I Two like for the Wiker. I, like I like the fifty, but I like the Wiker. It goes Wiker, fifty nationals, and now the Eldora. Where's the national? Open I mean, at, a million buddy? dollars makes you like it a little better, right? Never pushes it up the list. Yeah. Where's the national open at? The nationals. Oh, the national. It's down, buddy. <laughs> you're gonna make so, Justin cry. Justin, let's say fight. you, <laughs> let's say you had a competing, uh, a, a competing any night Friday night four ten racetrack. Would you give it the opportunity to not go to Williams Grove? Like, like a Seelands Grove. Okay. Yes, yeah. I would. I'd, I'd go to Seals Grove over the Grove. Yeah. And and that's preference. I mean, there's nothing, you know, again, Williams Grove is difficult and love it, it hate a, it, whatever. It but has it's a the, bridge. It's the Friday night thing, right? <laughs> so I think we're just used to it. Like Saturday's always had competition. Mm -hmm. Friday night really had a regular competition in the 410 if, division. If Lernerville was closer, I'd go out to Lernerville. Oh, don't say that. I, I tried to Justin that. Justin apparently loves chaos, basically is what I've learned here. Listen, we have, we have an iRacer buddy who is so everything Lernerville and he lives out that way. So like that's his home track. So he defends it to the end. I don't I, I can't do it. I can't have like can't. six hours for you, Justin. Why would you do that? It, that's why he's not doing it. Yeah. Um <laughs> if you had it up to you, would you run Western PA Speed Week or would you want to do all of our PA Speed Week? I'd like to try Western PA Speed Week. Uh, how good I do? Probably not, but I'd like to probably do all PA Speed Week. All right, man. We're going to get you out of here. Appreciate your time. Um, tell us a little bit. Uh, thanks some sponsors, people to help you out, get you up and down the road, uh, even if it's not a short, short, or a long haul, uh, just around the road here. But who helps you out with the car? Uh, my mom, my dad, Mid Atlantic Transportation, JG Cronenberger, Enterprise Rental Car. I forget. Red Red Point Wealth Partners, my girlfriend Coral. Uh, hey. hey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm probably forgetting some, some, somebody. Well, you got Coral, so that's the important one. You won't yeah, that's that. the most important one. So here's what you do. If you forgot them right now, that's okay. When you win this season, come back on a Monday, talk about the win. You can thank them all. All right. <laughs> thank you, Frank. Right. We'll do that. Awesome, thank you Justin. so much. Thank you so much, buddy. Thank you. Justin, thank you. Take care, man. Good luck this year. Awesome, awesome talk with uh, Justin there. <clears throat> uh, we're going to be right back uh, in about three, four just, minutes. Just here. enough to fill this up. That's just all enough. We need. And we'll be right back with Devin Borden.